Now, does that mean you're responsible for their salvation? No. 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 But you are responsible for revealing salvation. Amen. The Bible says, be ye the light. If, you're, if we're not the light, if, what good is the light if it ain't shining on anything? Ephesians 5.11. Somebody needs to read that. Thank you, sir. What is Ephesians 5.11? We gotta be careful who we're with. We gotta be careful who we associate ourselves with. But one of the things we're supposed to be doing. Somebody turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12:1. 12, this is what we're supposed to be doing. If you confess that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, if you, are uh, if you are addressing the true Sabbath, if you are an Adventist, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, fully acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. So that means it begins with our reasonable service. The first thing we are supposed to do while we are waiting on the Lord Jesus Christ is present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. This is a reasonable service. Not all of it, but it's a reasonable service. Are we presenting our bodies a living sacrifice? Are we sacrificing worldliness for godliness? Does your life reflect the Lord Jesus Christ or does it reflect the world? What do people see when they look at your life? Do they see the Lord Jesus Christ who loves them? Or do they see the latest fashion? The latest song that's up? The latest whatever? What do they see? You see, a good watchman is always in uniform. A good watchman looks the part in the way he acts in the way he carries himself. It is important, if we are going to be the light of the world, that we are the light of the world. Amen. You can't be what you're not. <coughs> what else are we supposed to do? What is, come my turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, 19. What are we supposed to be doing while we're waiting? Love God. We supposed to love God? Absolutely. What are we doing? We're in the church. What is the word? What is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19? If we are truly the remnant church, then should not we be about our Father's business? What is our Father's business? It's the Great Commission. We should be baptizing people. Amen. We should be teaching people. Amen. One by example. If we are not doing that, then we're not doing, we're not being good watchmen. Good watchmen are on that post, they're in uniform, they have the right mannerism, and they're doing their job. There's a lot of us in the church that's not doing our jobs. And here's how you know if you're doing your job. If you are using your spiritual gift for the glory, to glorify God, then you're doing your job. If you are coming to church, showing up, sitting in a pew, and that is the last time you talk about God until next Sabbath, then you're not doing your job. What good is the watchman if he's not doing his job? This is why I call it spiritual sleep. There's a lot of us in the church that are sleeping spiritually. We're just here watching. We're sleeping. We're not using our gifts. 
We're not preaching. We're not teaching. We're not showing anybody anything. We're just looking out for ourselves. And yes, you can be selfish in the church. You can be in the church and only looking out for yourself. I'm sorry for the way I sound, but that's what the Bible says. We're not here for ourselves. Amen. You realize once you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and the glory of God is inside you, you are no longer self-oriented. You're always looking out for somebody else. Amen. Because whatever God puts in your path is there for a reason. And he has asked us, commanded us, that we need to be about his business. And the Great Commission is very clear that we should be going out and spreading the gospel. Because that's really what this is about. Because everybody has a choice. Everybody has to make a choice. Some of us, our choices are going to have to be made today. When you leave here. Or even before you leave here. Because, you know, we got conflicts even in the church. And these conflicts that we have in the church are being used against the church. Now, since nobody knows what I'm talking about, let me be specific. While the church is arguing over uh, uh, gay rights and gay issues, and the other side is arguing about women's ordination, and who should be standing in pulpits, who should have certain titles, while well, all that's going on, what is the enemy doing? He's taking the division and saying, well, they're not together. They're divided. There's reports that says the seven day Adventist church is being divided. Even within ourselves, we're being divided. You got to be careful what you're looking at on the internet. Because you can, corruption can come from within. And we need to take, like I said, take it and put it, filter it through the Word of God. And if it doesn't fit it through the word of God, if it doesn't come out on the other side as loving somebody, if it comes out as selfishness or about me, then that's not God. We need to have our filters on. We need to start doing something. I want you to turn to Psalms 119. I'll end with this. Psalms 119. Go to verse 60. Psalms 119, 60. It is important <laughs> that we make sure that we're doing something. If you have made a decision that you are for God and not against God, because before I say the scripture, let me tell you something. When I say there, there is the battle, there is a battle going on, and we know it's a, the battle is not carnal, it's a spiritual battle like between flesh and spirit. Our, our flesh, as I said, is already lost. In flesh, you cannot worship God. In flesh, you cannot keep His commandments. In flesh, we can do nothing but be against God. Because your flesh doesn't want to worship God in spirit and truth. Your flesh doesn't want to love your brother and sister. Your flesh doesn't want to give. Your flesh wants to take. Your flesh is in motion. Your flesh remembers everything that he said against you. Your flesh is choking up every sin somebody did against you. That's what you're doing in flesh. In flesh, there's no way I can love my neighbor. I don't even love my wife in flesh. I don't love my church in flesh. I do not love the Word of God in the flesh. Why? Because the flesh is only after the flesh. Amen. This is what lust is. Flesh oriented. Let me take care of my flesh. My needs, my wants, my desires. It's about me. And God can't be in it if it's about me. And this is what's battling against what's in the Spirit. Galatians. And Galatians 5, 16. Amen. Turn to Galatians 5, 16. I'll say this before I close. 
And then we'll get to uh, Psalms 119. Ricky, read that for me, please. Out loud. I say they have walked in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Walk in spirit. Do not engage in us with the flesh. The world that we live in, the world that we live in, everything in it is catering to the flesh. Amen. I don't, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter where you live, how rich or poor you are. Everything you buy in the store caters to the flesh. What do we do that caters to the Spirit? When we come to church, we read our Bible, we love each other, we cater to the Spirit. But here's the math. You're in flesh six days a week, you're in church one day a week. See the problem? We need to be in church seven days a week. In Spirit. And we cannot wait. Because there are some very, very powerful things happening on the globe. That's going to affect all of us. We cannot wait. <coughs> We're not talking to people who just got here. You wasn't just baptized this morning. We're talking to the saints. We're talking to somebody who understands what the Sabbath is really all about. We need to magnify what the Sabbath is really all about. We need to make sure we are clear on what we believe in. What are the principles of our faith? If you can't answer the question to yourself, how can you answer it to somebody else? We need to know what we believe in. And we need to do it now. Somebody read for me uh, Psalms 119, 60. I made haste. Delayed not to keep thy commandments. Amen. We cannot wait. Because if you wait, if you delay in fulfilling what God's commandments are, in fulfilling what God's will is for your life, some of us are going to realize it when it's too late. In fact, the Bible says clearly, very clear. Most people will, who will not make it, will not make it because they wait. Not because they're atheists. Not because uh, they worship on the first day of the week. They won't make it because they were sitting here in church. And they wait. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for the lightning to strike. And for God to say, here, this is what you're supposed to be doing. When you've been telling you that in your prayers every night. We're waiting for a phone call, the phone to ring. And say, here, here's your phone call. Now maybe you'll do what God's been telling you to do for months and years. Some of you already know what God has ordained for you to do. And you're sitting here waiting. What are you waiting for? Why are you procrastinating when every single day Satan is getting stronger and stronger and stronger until his deception will overtake you? The Bible even says, that if we're not worshiping the spirit and the truth, God will allow a lie to come in and overwhelm you with deception. Let him who is unjust be unjust still. Let him who is filthy be filthy still. If you wait for that to happen, it'll be too late. It'll be too late. Because at that time, it'll be time to close it up and it'll be time to go home. And all of us is going home out of ones, the watchman that's ready. Don't let him come and you're sleeping. This is why the Bible says that he come at a time where you don't, you don't expect it. Because we got too many people in the church spiritually sleeping. We need to wake up. We need to be about our father's business. We need to be helping our brothers and our sisters understand what God's will is for their lives. 
We need to be others oriented and not self oriented. Amen. It's about somebody else. It was really a pleasure for me to be here today. And I've made it clear to the pastor and to the elders of this church that my phone number is available to anybody here. If you want or you need to call me for prayer, for counseling, for any reason, you may do so. It does not matter that I don't live down the street anymore. If I need to come here to help somebody, to counsel with somebody, in any way, to pray for somebody, I will get in my hoopty and I will hoop on down here. <laughs> you know, young people say hoopty. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> so you get in your car, you call it hoopty. You know, it's be, be hopping around on horses, I guess. I don't know. But I, I will do that. Because I love all of you. And when I look out and I see all of you, I want to see the same faces when we all go to glory. Amen. I want y'all to come up here. And I want y'all to help me make sure I'm there. Because I still have some issues too. You know? This is a mirror when you're up here. I'm not looking at y'all, I'm looking at us. Can we do that? Amen. Have I confused anybody? I didn't want to do that. I want to end with a prayer. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Father, I just thank you for this time we spent looking at your word taking a situation that is growing desperate every day and understanding back to our true nature of why we are even here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you, O oh Father, to strengthen and guide the leadership of this house that they may walk by faith and not by sight in obedience to your commission to your place in their lives and on this church. We ask you to strengthen and guide each and every member here Lord, we ask for a blessing for all the visitors here today. Bless my family, O oh Lord, when we travel back to my home. We ask you, O oh Lord, to bless this church in a special way, this neighborhood, this area, our country, and this, our earth. Bless it in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs>
thank you for this year's Sabbath day. We thank you for the words you've given to us today. That we may not just sit in anticipation, but in preparation to prepare for your second coming. In Jesus' name, we ask you to go with each and every person here. And may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest in the Bible with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.